yeah, my mom getting sick and dying and just, I lost some of my, my last attachments, honestly, to like the material world. I'm a Buddhist and in Buddhism we believe not only in detachment from the material world, but also in even detachment from ourselves. There's this principle of anatta, which is, it's translated to mean that the self is a delusion. It doesn't literally mean the self doesn't exist because you know, I believe that my experience is real, that I'm, that, I, that I'm conscious and that my feelings and perceptions are actually real feelings and perceptions. What it actually means is that the idea of a separate self is a delusion, that all life and all consciousness is connected. All life is precious. And when we look at the world through our own experience and through our own selfish desires and our selfish perceptions, not even selfish, just my eyes are not the only eyes in the world. And if I were, if I were truly enlightened, I would see with everyone's eyes. You know, I would, I would see and realize, wow, I can only see, you know, the hundred in 80 or 210 degrees in front of me under the color spectrum that I'm able to perceive because of the way my eyes are engineered. But a cat can see something very different, a parrot. You can see something different. The people watching this camera can see something very different. And all those experiences are one and the same. And so the most enlightened beings on this earth realize that myself is not actually a self. It's part of a broader fabric of life. It's part of the broader continuation of experience and subjectivity and consciousness in the universe. It's more like an ocean, and, and my, my existence in this ocean is like one drop. But what's real is not the one drop, because the one drop is only significant to the extent it's part of that ocean. It is, it is part of the ocean. It, it rises with the ocean. It, it, it drops with the ocean. It flows with the ocean. And, and so that, that experience of kind of watching my mom die and realizing, you know, obviously I care about my mom immensely. I love her, and I miss her to this day. When I lost my mom, it was, it was like the last strain that was holding me back from just realizing that I'm not really me. I'm just, I, I almost see myself as just like a vessel for the defense of life now. And I, I really think it's important because a lot of people would say like, wow, that seems so hard. And you know, how do you give up all these things? And it's like, no, I don't really feel that way at all. I feel really good. Yeah, yeah. I'm like the happiest person I know. And, I can get beat up by dog meat traders, thrown in jail a bunch of times, people can call me a cult leader. Yeah. And it just doesn't really phase me and it's because of this sense of detachment. And, and I, I think people should aspire for that because I think it's it really puts you in a good place. Like I'm happier and thriving more, even as an individual, than I ever have before. And it's because I realize my own individual experience isn't that important. Not as not as well known, but I think it's it's probably the most important. You know, and it's I think maybe the reason it's not as popular is it seems like a sacrifice. It's like, denial of self? What, are you telling me I can't have any selfish desires at all? It's like, no, it's actually, it's, it's not denial of self. It's acceptance of the truth of the universe, which is that all life is precious and all life is equal. Absolutely. You know, all, all consciousness is the same. That It's funny, like, I feel like <laughs> these ancient Buddhist monks and sages Identify these truths that that one matters is just the the existence of sentience, the feelings that a cat has, or a dog has, or a fish has, or or any of us have. That consciousness will inevitably be repelled by suffering, and have to do everything it can to stop suffering because it would appreciate it.